Organizations, individuals, even the government need to be in a constant state of awareness, even paranoia, to be able to deal with the changes that are happening in the world today. These are what we call the rebrain or rot moments of 2018. So what were those ROR moments of 2018? Let's start with the first one, the ban on bitcoins and cryptocurrencies in 2018. After years of lobbing the ball between the various financial regulators in the country, it's the banking regulator that finally took the decisive call on bitcoins and cryptocurrencies and whether they should be allowed in India at all. In July of 2018, the Supreme Court of India finally upheld the RBI ban which eventually killed the flourishing industry that had already been doing business worth rupees 100 to 200 crores per day. There is some hope however because the interdisciplinary committee set up to examine bitcoins and cryptocurrencies is believed to be of the view that cryptos must be allowed although with substantial riders. The question is, will the RBI bring back bitcoins and cryptocurrencies in 2019? The next major ROR moment came in the Punjab National Bank scam. The 2.2 billion Nirav Modi Mehul Choksi led Punjab National Bank scam shook up India's banking sector to the harsh realities of economic frauds and runaway fugitives. It triggered a crackdown on banks that had still not automated their systems or linked their core banking software with the international SWIFT software. It created new guidelines to prevent such frauds in the future and even banned letters of undertaking. Companies that were not prepared to handle this have taken a substantial hit especially in their exports because of the letters of undertaking ban. The next major ROR moment came with the Fugitive Economic Offenders Bill of 2018. The escape of the Mehul Choksi Nirav Modi duo and the previous escape of Vijay Malia together prompted the government to enact the Fugitive Economic Offenders Bill of 2018. It aims to prevent offenders from fleeing the country to evade the law. Their assets can now be confiscated expeditiously if they fail to present themselves before the law. That was a major ROR moment as far as the economic offences in the country are concerned. The next big moment came with the non-performing asset circular that the Reserve Bank of India put out in February of 2018. The RBI circular mandated that all banks should report unpaid loans beyond the 90 days as NPAs. It was a watershed moment in 2018. Not only did it raise India's NPAs by over 25% in just one circular, it was also the beginning of the end of an uneasy relationship between the Reserve Bank of India and the Centre. It triggered a string of unilateral initiatives by both the Centre in the form of the Sashakt scheme to defer bad loans and the RBI which brought out strict regulations on prompt corrective actions against weak banks. The spat between the Centre and the RBI finally led to the invocation of Section 7 of the RBI Act for the first time in RBI's history. A series of verbal duels between the Centre and RBI eventually led to the resignation of the Governor Urjit Patel. That was really one of the key ROR moments of 2018. Next is the coming into its own of artificial intelligence in 2018. Artificial intelligence and data analytics really came to the fore in 2018. In India, new business models using AI have begun emerging in industries as diverse as HR, e-commerce and healthcare. Similarly, across the world, the race to create business models around artificial intelligence is gaining momentum. For the first time ever, there is an AI-enabled news anchor in China. Organizations need to get on to the AI bandwagon fast. Those who cannot will have to rebrain or rot. The next major moment came in the form of the Facebook Cambridge Analytica data scandal. It has unearthed that Cambridge Analytica had harvested data of millions of Facebook users without their consent. It was a moment of betrayal for Facebook users against the social media giant. The event led to the significant fall in the company's share price and led to the examination of Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg by the US Senate. Facebook has since been involved with a few more data breaches through the year. It's a moment of reckoning for the world's biggest social media website. 
Next, as non-performing assets continued to pile in banks across the country, this led to the departure of several high-profile bank CEOs from their companies during the year. Hiding non-performing assets and keeping dodgy accounts and alleged impropriety led to the premature departure of these CEOs, including Access Bank's Shikha Sharma, Allahabad Bank's Usha Anand Subramanian, ICICI Bank's Chanda Kochar, and Yes Bank's Rana Kapoor. The departure of top bankers even culminated in the resignation of banking regulator RBI's governor, Urjit Patel himself, following a string of differences with the centre. It is the e-commerce industry, India's booming e-tail sector, that saw the next ROR moment. Walmart bought over Flipkart, India's largest e-commerce site. The world's largest retailer, Walmart's decision to buy Flipkart in the $16 billion deal brought the famous Walmart-Amazon rivalry to Indian shores. The deal has intensified rapid-fire investment to capitalize Indian entities to outlast each other in the ongoing cash burn. However, a new press note redefining the guidelines for FDI in e-commerce at the end of the year has really spooked all foreign retailers as the center aims to curb indiscriminate discounting in the domestic market. So that predatory pricing which was allegedly killing local businesses could be prevented. This is going to be a long drawn fight between foreign e-tailers and domestic players. It's a big watershed moment in India's e-tail sector. The next major moment comes in the form of the Personal Data Protection Bill of 2018. The Sri Krishna Committee report outlining India's data protection policy caused an intense debate over the ownership, use and storage of data. The policy, however, has too many loose ends. An individual has no right to be forgotten. The clause asking for data to be stored locally has left a loophole. And this policy makes individuals liable for withdrawal of consent to use data. Even violation of policy will attract lenient fines. The debate around data protection bill has only just begun. And the next moment comes in the form of the Aadhaar verdict. This had been in the making for a long time. After years of raging debate over the validity of Aadhaar for various services availed by Indian citizens, it was the Supreme Court verdict in September that finally put a lid on the heated debate. The Supreme Court held Aadhaar constitutionally valid by a 4 is to 1 verdict, but barred banks and telecom companies from asking for Aadhaar from their customers. But it did make it mandatory to avail government services and to file income tax returns. Aadhaar is here to stay. Make no mistake about it.